Hello. In this session, we will look at how you can uh, create additional volumes or how you can create new EBS volumes and then attach it to your EC2 instances. So at any point, if you want additional storage or if you want to increase the storage capacity of your EC2 instances, then uh, we will need to create the EBS volumes and then we will need to attach them or we will need to mount those volumes to the EC2 instances so that you can uh, start using that storage capacity to store your data. Now, there are two ways that you can do this. One is when you're launching the instance, you can increase the capacity. If you know beforehand uh, that you will be needing additional storage, you can do that when you're launching the instance. And uh, the other option you have is once you're done launching the instance, at any point you want to increase the storage, you can do that also. So in this session, I will show you how you can uh, increase the storage capacity of your EC2 instances. Once again, before we start off with the session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Now, before I start off uh, with the example, let's do a quick recap of what is your EBS. So EBS, it stands for Elastic Block Storage. And this simply provides us with your block level storage that we can attach to your EC2 instances, right? So EBS, it's your block level type of storage capacity that we have. And we can attach this to your EC2 instances whenever you want that storage capacity. So these EBS volumes, these behaves like a raw unformatted block devices and we can mount them to your EC2 instances. So basically the storage capacity of your EC2 instances, we call them as your uh, elastic block store. So we can mount this to your EC2 instances and we can start using them uh, to basically store, uh, use them to store some data. So EBS volumes that are attached to an EC2 instance are exposed as storage volumes. So these are our storage capacity storage volumes and these are independent of the ec2 instance so this does not depend on the life cycle of your ec2 instance even if you terminate the instance the data can still be available so this is your persistent storage type all right so by default whenever we launch our ec2 instances so here let's say i'll go to launch instances you get to choose the storage capacity so let me give it a name so let's call this as a uh, demo just for the sake of example and um, i'll select my key pair or sorry the instance type so by default we'll have t2.micro so we will leave it to that i'll select my key pair that i'll use to log into this server and uh, we'll select our existing firewall and then comes our storage so by default depending on the ami that you have selected in my case i've gone with amazon linux ami this gives me by default 8 storage uh, 8 gb of uh, storage capacity and this gives me general purpose gp3 right uh, now here if you know that you will be needing additional storage so either you can increase this one like you know 10 20 30 100 200 whatever you want or if you want like partitions, right? So like C drive, D drive, and then so on, you can add additional volumes as well. All right, so this is one option you have. Now, if you see this one, this is your root volume. So that's basically where your OS related information will be stored. And this one, if you see, it says EBS volumes. So these are like your additional volumes or additional storage that you are uh, going to mount to your EC2 instance, all right? Now, most of the times what happens is um, uh, we go with the uh, minimum storage capacity that we need. We don't increase the storage unnecessarily. Now, at this point, let's say I don't need this additional storage, right? So I will go with the default storage capacity that I have, right? So which is my 1 GB. Now, one more important point that I want to mention here is that whenever we are talking about your uh, root volume, all right? This one by default gets deleted when the instance is terminated. So delete on termination is set to yes. That means if I terminate my instance, the volume is also deleted. This is applicable only for the root volume. All right. If you are attaching any additional volume, the delete on termination is set to no. So any additional volumes that we will attach will not be deleted when we terminate the instance. Now, if you want to keep the root volume as well, you can simply set this to no. And this becomes your persistent storage. Now, even if I terminate the instance, my data would still be available for me. The volumes would still be available for me. So for now, I'll go with the default option that we have. And let me remove this. So we are just going with the 8 GB storage capacity that we have. 
and then launch instance and this will begin launching my EC2 instance right now any instances that you have launched the volume so here you can see the storage capacity this clearly tells me the volume size the volume ID the device name when this was attached and all other information now all the volumes that uh, are associated with the EC2 instance will be available over here okay so here if you go to the volumes section you should be able to see all the volumes that are associated with your EC2 instance so in my case as of now I have one EC2 instance and I have one volume so by default one instance will have one volume all right so also you can see here to which instances it is attached your storage capacity and all that information will be available for you now let's log in to this EC2 instance so let me go to the server and let me SSH to this so I'll run the SSH command give my username and the IP address and this should log in to the EC2 instance for me and now this is a Linux machine that we have right so there are a few commands that I can run to check my storage capacity so one of the commands that I'm going to run is df-h I'll explain this command in some time but now here you should be able to see the storage capacity all right so this slash dev slash xvda1 so that's my device name and the size is 8.8 .8 GB I, I, out of this I've used 1.5 GB and the remaining I have is 6.5 GB all right so the default storage capacity that we have right which is the 8 GB you can see that it is available to my server all right now at a later point let's say you realize that you want more storage capacity to this right so how do we do that so uh, it's a step-by-step -step process that we will have to do okay so the first thing that you will have to do is you'll have to note down the availability zone right so if you remember the features of your EBS volumes I clearly told you that at any point if you want to attach additional volumes to your EC2 instance the EC2 instance and the volumes should be in the same availability zone so my instance is running in this availability zone US East 1B so let's go and create a new volume right so the volume should be created in the same availability zone if not you won't be able to attach them if they are in two different availability zones all right so it's a very important point to remember so we'll go to the volumes and here we will create a new volume and you can choose the type of volume you want we've already discussed about this and then the storage capacity so let's say i'll set this to 20 gb just for the sake of example and then your availability zone so in my case the instance is running in us is 1b so we will specify that now snapshot id we are not using anything we are not encrypting this volume and if you want to add a tag you can add a tag to this so let's call this as uh, additional volume and then we will create a volume so this will create a new volume for me all right now the volume has been created and uh, generally there are two state there are two possible states with this okay so one is your in use in use means the volume is attached with an ec2 instance and if you see available that means it is not attached with any ec2 instance so this additional volume that we have created uh, it is not yet attached with any of our ec2 instance all right so this will be step one step two will be to attach this volume to your ec2 instance all right so we can select this volume and uh, go to actions and here you should be able to see this attach volume so click on attach volume and here you should be able to see the instance so if you have created the volume in the same availability zone as your ec2 instance you should be able to see a drop down uh, list of your ec2 instances if you don't see that means your instance and your ebs volumes are not in the same availability zone all right so i'll select my ec2 instance and that's the default device name uh, we will leave it to that and then click on attach volume this will be your step two all right so now you can see it says in use and to which instance it is attached so you can attach multiple volumes to an ec2 instance all right and one volume can be part of only one ec2 instance so it's your one-to-one -one mapping i cannot attach the same volume to multiple ec2 instances okay all right so this is this is your step two now that we have attached 
our um, EBS volumes, if I run this DF51H, this would still not show me that additional storage, the 20 GB additional storage that we have allocated. It is still not yet available for me. So there are a few additional commands that we will have to run to mount this uh, um, volume, EBS volume to your EC2 instance. All right, so this is where we are going to run few commands. So you can run this df-h command, which is a uh, disk file system. So this basically gives you, you can use this to uh, basically list the storage capacity in the human readable format. So that's the command I'm using over here. All right, so you can see the uh, storage capacity that we have. So we have 8 GB, all right. However, in this case, it is not showing us the additional volume that we have uh, attached, right. So there's another command that we can use, which is your LSBLK. Now what this will do is this will list all the block devices, whether they are mounted or not, it will list down all the block devices. So here I'll run this command and you should be able to see the uh, additional volume over here, the 20 GB, right? So the, the, my instance is telling that, okay, I'm able to see this additional storage, however, it is not yet mounted. So the mount point, if you see, this is empty, all right? So we will need to create a mount point. So in order for us to make this volume usable, we will need to mount it. So if you're um, mounting this volume for the first time, we will need to create a file system, all right? So, um, and you will also need to specify where you wanna mount it, the path. All right, so in this case, we are going to create a new directory and we are creating it in the root path. So this slash is basically a root path and then we are giving it a name. So this is user defined. You can do whatever you want. For my case, just for the sake of example, I am creating it as this new volume. So this will, like I said, create a, uh, okay, so I need root permissions for this. And let me run this command once again. So this, so if I go to the root, folder now I should be able to see that new volume created so this is where we are going to mount our additional storage okay post that we will need to create a file system so this will create a file system for slash dev slash stf with the type ext4 so this will this is going to be ext4 this is a file type so like how we have NTFS, we have ext1, 2, 3. Likewise, we have different different types of file systems. We are going to create ext4 file system. And this is the device name. Now, if you're not sure on the device name, you can look at your volume, the EBS volume, and here it will give you the device name. So this is the device name what we are using. All right. So let me run this command over here. So we'll say mkfs hyphen t ext4 and then the device name so what this will do is this will create a file system for us right so once a file system is created we are going to mount so we are going to mount this file system to, to our folder the mount point that we have created right so let's run this command so mount slash dev slash stf and we are going to mount this to my new volume and done now if i run this lsblk command you will see that um lsblk sorry so you will see that it is showing me the mount point and if i run this df-h command you can see now i'm able to see that 20 gb of storage capacity that i have attached so out of this i've used 24 kilo kilobytes 19 gb is available and this is where it is mounted. So this is how you can create additional volumes at any point you want and you can attach them and you can mount them to your EC2 instances. All right. And at any point, if you want to unmount it and attach it to another instance, you can do that also. So all you have to do is just run this U mount command. So U mount slash dev slash STF. So this will unmount the storage capacity all right and then we can simply go and detach it from the ec2 instance so here i can select the volume that we have so this is the 20 gb we have and go to actions and you should be able to see this detach volume all right so this will uh, remove it from the ec2 instance 
all right so here give it a uh, give it some time all right so this should again show you so you can see this is in the detaching state so this will again become available and then again you can attach it to another instance now one very important point to remember here is this mkfs is a one time task all right uh, you'll have to do this the first time you are um, um, mounting an ebs volume if you do this again whatever the data you have on the volume that will be lost all right so please don't do this this is a one time uh, command you don't have to do it again and again and again uh, if you want to attach an existing uh, uh, volume which is already part of an ec2 instance if you want to attach that to a new instance you simply unmount it and mount it don't create the file system again the data will be lost right so yeah so now you can see that's available and um, i can go ahead and attach this to my another ec2 instance so that's basically how um, we can create additional volumes and we can attach them to your uh, ec2 instances and this root volume that we have by default if i terminate the instance the root volume is also deleted however any additional volumes that i create and attach will not be deleted we'll have to manually go and delete them so once you're done working with this example please go ahead and delete any additional volumes that you've created so that we don't incur any unnecessary charges that's all for this session thank you once again before you leave please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.